Welcome back to the Girlfriend Doctor Show. It is good to be here with you again, and we are full bloom into the month of love that we can really focus on celebrating uh, love and Valentine's Day and Galentine's Day, hanging out with girlfriends, hanging out with your lover, whatever it may be. No stress, that's the intention. And really, I think one of the biggest focuses with hearts all around is to see how well we're doing our self-love and our self-care. I have just finished the Keto Green 16 program again uh, live. We did that here in Dallas, as well as online with over 2,000 participants. And it was really amazing. We had uh, a lot of activity in our uh, private challenge group and a lot of great conversation. So it's really beautiful. And what that brought up is, okay, we've done Keto Green 16 Challenge, what next? How do we keep the momentum going? Where do we, you know, what are some things that usually keep us getting stuck? And, and it's, you know, regarding dietary issues, one of the things I discussed with our group last night was the um, food sensitivities. You've got to figure out those food sensitivities and inflammation. We have to heal from inflammation. So all that is part of the program, but sometimes there's next steps. Dietarily wise, it's with menu pause. That's why I wrote those six different, those five different six day menu plans. So that's a great way to go with the menu. The other part is hormones. So hormones like progesterone, DHEA, using um, adaptogens to support like in Mighty Maca. So using these additional supplements can help. And again, looking for hormone balance. So figuring out food sensitivities, figuring out hormonal imbalances are key to helping you maintain and um, continue to succeed in feeling balanced, feeling energized. The big part is weight loss resistance. Weight loss resistance comes in for many, many reasons. It comes in because of, you know, hormone disruptors, mold toxicity, which is what I had suffered through over the last um, several several months. And so it's it's a tough one, especially difficult, sometimes difficult to to um, treat with especially specifically black mold exposures. So that can knock out your thyroid. It can cause metabolic dysfunction as well as inflammation at a cellular level in your body. But hormone disruptors like from drinking out of plastic bottles, aluminum cans, I mean, just name it, we're exposed a lot. So we have to keep the detoxification pat pathways open. And so that's a really key piece. So what happens, what else can we do to really support, support the metabolism and support one of the other big uh, regulators for our hormones is our thyroid hormone. So our, our thyroid is a thermoregulating um, organ in our body and it helps us with our metabolism. When it's sluggish, we can see hair loss, fatigue, uh, just exhaustion in general, um, slower to react decreased reaction times, things like that are all part of being with a, a low thyroid and weight gain, of course. So that's something that we want to address too. To kind of dig deep into this area and improving your met metabolism and metabolic function, I think it's really key. Because some, and I'm going to bring on an expert and we're gonna talk about a few things, uh, a couple of places where I got stuck and where we can help dig in and support your body's metabolism and mitochondrial function, which is what comes down to. So my guest today is Sarah Banta. She has been on the Girlfriend Doctor show before. I encourage you to check out prior episodes, but she has, she has the top 100 health podcast called Accelerated Health TV. She has over 600,000 listeners a month. And Sarah's the owner and founder of Accelerated Health Products. Her goal is to help her clients and listeners reach their optimal state of health through quality detox supplements, cutting edge health technologies and modalities. She had her own journey to develop her own protocols and programs as well. That's really um, impressive. She is also a graduate of Stanford University with degrees in economics and psychology, as well as a graduate of the Institute of Integrative Nutrition and the Invincible Wellness System. With no further ado, let me bring on, all right. Bring on Sarah. Hello, Sarah. 
Hi, Anna. How are you? I'm so glad to be back. Well, thank you for joining us back. I want you to share a little bit of your story, which brought you into this journey, and then definitely to dig deep into supporting the mitochondria metabolism. Oh, gosh. Well, first of all, listening to you and what you were saying about all that's going on in the body and the endocrine disruptors, the estrogen dominance, the detox pathways, these little hidden things that no one thinks about. It's not just about calories in, calories out. You are speaking my language. So I'm super excited to dive into all of that. Oh, my journey. I'm a mom of three. My kids are now old, old. They're 17, 19, and 21. But when they were young, um, I hit rock bottom. My stomach was a disaster. Their food was just rotting. There was no di um, digestion. My hormonal balance was totally off. I had PCOS, my hair falling out, my skin was breaking out. I was getting wrinkles and having acne. Um, I had IBS, Crohn's disease, you name it, I had it. I had heavy metal uh, toxicity as well. My lead and mercury levels were literally off the charts when I got tested. And then as I was progressing and peeling my health like an onion, my nine-year-old son, who's now 21, was diagnosed with leukemia. And through just natural um, supplements and my flagship product of the Accelerated Silver and cleaning up his diet a little bit. I didn't even really know much about diet back then. Uh, he is now cancer free. And not only that, but all five of us in our family have had um, the virus tested positive at least once or twice with no symptoms. So our immune systems are strong. We've we've navigated his whole um, his whole journey. My daughter, who didn't have cancer, but she had asthma, allergies, anemia. She couldn't get off the couch to go ride her bike when she was four years old. That girl is nineteen, freshman at USC. Um, rowing on the rowing team. And I don't know if any of you have been on a rowing machine, but it's one of the hardest workouts out there. So she definitely is functionally optimally and there's been progression and we've seen um, changes in, in my husband and my youngest as well. So all of that being said, at the age of 48, I feel better than I did as a teenager and in my twenties. And um, I'm wanting to share all of the good news that there's hope out there, regardless of what you're feeling, how tired you are, your brain fog, your depression, there's hope. And um, I'm here to uncover it. Well, I think that is so awesome. I want to thank you for being here and also sharing your story. I think it's so much when we have to deviate from the standard path, it's because of a crisis that we don't have answers for. And uh, bravo for digging deep and taking that control. I think one of the biggest things is that, you know, I feel is the most important thing to me in working with patients is their empowerment their empowerment, that they're, you know, feel that they know what they need for their body, they're taking steps, and then they have the energy to make the right next steps, they have the willpower, they, you know, have this sensation of being able, you know, to do to conquer the world, so to speak, in a, in a nice way to do the things they enjoy doing. I always remember a patient of mine, she was 82 years old. And um, she had come in just not feeling herself, et cetera, and sluggish. And she's a psychologist, still a, practic a practicing uh, clinical psychologist at 82, lovely woman. And she said, you know, I put her on my detox. I said, you've got to get on my detox. You got to do that. That's with the, the current version of my um, keto green 10 day detox in my book, The Hormone Fix. And so but she did that for 20 over 21 days. And she came back in and she goes, Dr. Anna, I had this boat on my lake, this little rowboat that my son had given me maybe seven, eight years ago, something like that. And it's just been sitting there. She goes, mm -hmm. last week I got in that boat and I paddled around my lake. I just felt the energy to do that and do these action steps. And I think that's what so powerful. So I wanted to bring you on, especially at this time when our team, like we've had thousands of women go through Keto Green 16 challenge program and just following the Keto Green, you know, many more, well, I guess, you know, hundreds of thousands more learning about the keto green lifestyle and for brain health, physical health, but there are those stuck points. So when metabolism stuck points, and for me, it was not eating enough protein, eating one meal a day, which was way too late. 
<laughs> so let me say that again. So a couple of things for me was not eating enough protein, eating one meal a day um, and just way too late in the day. And, uh, and that caused an increase in uric acid and uric acid slowed down my metabolism. And it was a really big problem. So, um, and I didn't realize it for a long time. It gets easy when you're in ketosis a lot to not think about eating. That, that was my experience. I have a hard time eating before um, four o'clock in the afternoon, just because I'm on the run and I'm busy and busy and busy. But you know what? My body feels so much better when I have two meals a day and it responds better. And I think us women really need to be careful with that. And you mentioned hypothyroidism. Um, I wanted to start out with that because when you're talking about, okay, women, they've done your, your program, now what? Well, why are we plateauing? I believe, Anna, through the pandemic, more than 90% of us are suffering from suboptimal thyroid function. And unfortunately, you go to the doctor, you get your TSH measured, and the doctor says, oh, you're within normal range. Well, number one, normal range is normal or the average of the average population. Do you want to be sick like the average normal American? That's not what we're looking for, but they're not doing the full panel. So number one, if you do go to the doctor, make sure you're getting your full panel done. But hypothyroidism, I don't care what you eat. If you're following Anna's program, if you're, if you're exercising, sleeping, doing all the right thing and your thyroid is not working, you're not going to lose weight. So, and it's not just about weight. Your thyroid is the master endocrine gland. And it truly is. So what, what, what are the signs to look for without the blood test? You can have muscle cramps. You can have a puffy face, um, edema oh. in the legs, depression. Did you know the number one cause of depression is actually iodine deficiency and iodine is needed for the thyroid? Most well, I want to just interrupt because iodine is needed for every hormone receptor site in our body. I know we could d dig deep into that too, but at the estrogen receptor sites, progesterone, right, Sarah? I mean, it's yes. needed for all of our hormonal receptor sites. It's a critical nutrient and, you know, it has been depleted from our diet for the last, I think it's over 70 years now because iodine used to be in, in the bread, but then that was substituted for bromine. And then we have other competitors to iodine like chlorine and fluoride. So that can really, all of those things really zap our thyroid function. I love that you brought that up. So you have thyroid receptor sites on every cell in your body, not just your thyroid. So if we're iodine deficient, which 96% of the United States is, that chlorine, that bromine, that fluoride is filling those receptor sites because it looks like iodine. So if you don't have enough iodine in there, all of those toxins are not only going to disrupt your hormones, they're going to slow down your metabolism, slow down your thyroid function, cause uh, the risk of breast cancer to increase and all of the cancers to increase. So that is why iodine supplementation is so imperative nowadays. And you have to be very careful about what iodine you take because most iodine supplements are coming from Asia where Fukushima is contaminating the, the iodine sources. So, so that's, that's radioactive, where... right? That's exactly. exposed with radiation. And it is, it is important. In my clinic, you know, I'm working on clients with suboptimal thyroid hormone issues or hormonal issues. Iodine supplementation is one of our first steps. And you created a, a different type, like you created an iodine supplementation. Will you talk about that? Yeah, it is monoatomic, meaning it's one molecule of iodine. So it has 100% bioavailability. Most iodine supplements really only have 20 to 30% bioavailability. You have to think about it. It's attached to another molecule. So your, your tired body that doesn't have energy already has to break apart that molecule to try to use that iodine and the iodine might be toxic where my accelerodyne iodine goes into all cells 
right away, and it is monoatomic, one molecule that is seeking that receptor site right away. So you take it and you wait at least 10 to 12 minutes to, before you eat or have any other supplements so it can go find its place and get in there. But what's so special about it, it is then enhanced with scalar frequencies. Those frequencies help detox the body of radiation and the toxins we're talking about, the fluoride, the bromide, the chlorine, and you need that iodine, that accelerodyne iodine to balance your estrogens, to detox the xenoestrogens, to help cleanse the liver because the liver's everything, right? You talk about detox. If our liver is not getting the love that it needs, it's going to back up and then you're going to have food sensitivities that you've never had. You're going to have rashes and your hair falling out and um, fat malabsorption or metabolism issues because your liver just can't do anything. Especially that, fatty liver, right? With yes. Fatty liver. And non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is the fastest growing disease in the United States. You don't have to be drinking alcohol to have fatty liver. Um, even my mom, who is a, a, a never had a weight issue in her life, but at the same time, because she's never had a weight issue, she's never really thought about what she's eating. She has fatty liver and her liver enzymes are through the roof. And it's interesting because people that have always been healthy, no health issues ever, all of a sudden are having these issues, Anna. And it's not just because they're eating um, too much fat. It's what foods are they eating? They're eating the processed foods that are um, full of fructose. And that fructose, people don't understand this. Fructose doesn't give you energy. Here you are eating food, thinking you're going to get energy from it, right? That's why we eat, to, to get energy. You eat the food, it steals ATP from the body. ATP is true cellular energy. So here you are eating food and it's stealing energy. Now, when it's doing that, that fructose is also being converted directly into liver fat. It's different than having a sweet potato. I'm not even talking about no carbs or, or high carbs. I'm talking about real food versus processed food, where that processed food is being converted directly into liver fat, whereas a sweet potato or whole carb is turning into glucose so that your muscles can use it and your brain can use it. Now, that being said, that iodine is kicking out the toxins, cleansing the liver so it can work better, but it's also increasing fat oxidation in the cells. It's increasing ATP. Now, ATP is everything. ATP is our mitochondrial health. We want to inc increase ATP. That accelerodyne iodine is increasing ATP by 18 times. So you are getting a boost in energy without the monster drink or the coffee, and you're getting a clearing of the pineal gland. You're defluorinating your brain. Mm -hmm. You're actually feeling that brain fog lift. And I've had so many people saying, okay, I'm taking the iodine for my thyroid, but all of a sudden I'm happy. Why am I so happy? Because it is, it is the number one mineral for depression because most people with depression are hypothyroid. And this is also why we have complemented this. And, and I don't think, Anna, you've tried this, but our accelerated thyroid is complementary to the accelerodyne where we have combined um, an Ayurvedic ancient herbal contranar, which is known to detox the thyroid, help with edema and, and thyroid nodules, thyroid cysts, but also support the thyroid with freeze-dried glandular that has the peptides and the amino acids to support the thyroid. And then we enhance it with scalar frequencies to help um, heal the thyroid and restore it back to normal function. So with those two supplements, people, many of them with the guidance of their doctors are, are getting off of their medication. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing that. Yeah, definitely. I haven't tried that yet. So it'd be good to try the controversy with iodine, right? There's a bunch of controversy with iodine where there's some uh, scholars that are saying iodine increases Hashimoto's. And definitely if you have Hashimoto's disease, you shouldn't take iodine and that it ca you know, causes exacerbation of these and as well as the dosage of iodine, high dose versus low dose. So as a physician, clinically, my 
practice where I've used iodine is, is certainly when I'm doing a full thyroid panel, I'm looking for thyroid antibodies. So want to address the reasons for high thyroid antibodies first as part of it. But I'll use in, in cases where there's low thyroid, you know, low to no thyroid antibodies, I do use iodine, especially in the cases of fibrocystic breast, ovarian cyst, PCOS, and metabolic issues. Those are huge issues, but definitely with fibrocystic breast, it seems to mm -hmm. be number one, uh, number one reason. And then there's the other issues with the thyroid that we're going to address or you've mentioned. But then there's the there's the camp that says no, no iodine at all. Well, make sure you're not over 75 micrograms of iodine per day. So I'm um, wondering, you know, what is your research in that area? I've done a lot of research and I don't have it in front of me, but there are a lot of studies that show high dosing of iodine before the blood test came out. And you have to wonder what is the goal of the blood test? What are the goals of these? We're um, talking about iodine blood tests, right? Yes. Um, They're very nonspecific. Right. So, so there have been lots of studies back in the um, fit before the fifties and where they have high dosed iodine and they've seen goiters go away and no negative side effects where most people are seeing negative side effects from high dosing of iodine is from the toxins or the allergy to other ingredients in the iodine supplement. Um, I go into it in detail on my website in a couple of different um, articles, one being just about iodine blood accuracy fa facts. And I can send you that article to link to in yeah. the show notes, because it is really a, a controversial topic where uh, unfortunately, yes, you can overdose on water. You can overdose on magnesium. You can overdose on no, the understandable, of, yeah. right? And so I think it's a Oh, go ahead. I think that I think the biggest controversy with that iodine is that again, how we're using it, and you know, monitoring the patient and working with the patient versus self medicating with iodine. But I don't think I think there's again, I think we have to look at it clinically and work with our patients when we're, um, you know, adding or increasing iodine. But in in the patients that I've worked with, I've never seen any adverse effects, touch wood, to date with iodine supplementation. Otherwise, actually, the biggest side effect that I've seen is acne. Mm. Interesting. Well, you know what? That makes sense. Why? Because what is the iodine doing other than boosting your ATP and helping with your, your thyroid function? It's detoxifying your body. What is the largest detoxification organ? Your skin. So when your body is trying to get rid of toxins, yes, it's going to come out of your skin. And a lot of times when people go through cleanses, they will see rashes on their body and, and then they'll go away once they're done. Well, you're stirring up those toxins. Remember, our fat cells, and this goes back to that unexplained weight gain, right? So the toxins, the radiation, the endocrine disruptors, the all the things that you talked about in the beginning, all of those things, when they come into the body, the body needs to survive. It wants to get those things out of the bloodstream, right? So it takes its fat cells and it encapsulates those toxins and stores it. Our fat cells are for survival. Thank goodness we've got our fat cells. We don't like them, but they're there for a reason. So when you start losing weight or you start detoxing, those toxins come out of the fat cells and into the bloodstream and the body's got to get rid of them. It's doing a really quick job of trying to get rid of them. The quickest way is through the skin. Now that's where through a lot of my cleanses, I have designed them to have binders like my accelerated detox powder to soak up those toxins really quick yeah. to take the burden off the liver and the kidneys and to keep the the acne or any sort of detox um, symptoms to a minimum. So I think it is important. Like when we talk about binders, we're talking about like charcoals, for instance, and we can use chlorella and spirulina too as binders as well. But charcoal is probably the biggest binder. And there's some other, there are some good binders that, I mean, we, we use them routinely when we're detoxing a patient, uh, especially for a rapid rate. And um, so when, 
and, and one of those things is when you're doing rapid fat, fat loss. And so with fat loss, um, using those binders, when you have mold toxicity, binders are essential component to that too. And as you're working on your body's metabolism, I want to talk to you about one of your other products that you created for metabolism, the Keto Ex Accelerated Keto. And mm -hmm. as in with our Keto Green, I've put um, a few clients on that and they've had excellent results. So I would love you to introduce it to our audience too and talk about, you know, like well, a well, couple of things. We get stuck with intermittent fasting. I had a patient in my office just the other day and she said, I, I thought I could never fast, right? I thought I could never fast. And now I've got into 14 hours and it, and it really helps. And that that's it, baby steps, right? We want to be able to work with our body and our, we just finished our 72 hour cleanse. And for some, uh, for some of us in there doing 72 hour water cleanse. And so like you work up to this amazing ability and um, determination and, and willpower that, you know, you're, bought, you're not fighting against the ghrelin, the hunger hormone, and you're, you're really feeling more empowered. And so, so oftentimes, especially starting out, supplementation can really help. Yeah, and the accelerated keto, we're actually changing the name to accelerated fast because it's not a keto supplement. Um, what it's doing, because people, the downside to fasting, people say, well, it's going to stress my body. And especially if a menopausal woman, they're already stressed, they, that's too much stress on the body. And so there's a lot of controversy about intermittent fasting. Well, the accelerated keto flips you into ketosis within 30 minutes, and it triggers ketosis and activates the body's own fat burning mechanisms. It increases ATP by five to 10 times. But what it's doing, like once you take it, you're like, oh, well, I don't need to eat because I've got thousands of calories on my body to snack on. And if you're trying to fast um, with just starting out from not fasting to fasting, you're going to have that ghrelin, you're going to have that hanger feeling, you're going to you're going to have low energy and lethargy. Well, that's because your body doesn't know how to tap into its fat stores. With accelerated keto, it's quickly triggering that ketosis, increasing your your fat burning, you're snacking on your own fat stores, right? So we're not starving. The body doesn't go into starvation mode. It is it knows it's got thousands of calories to burn. It's going to actually rev up its in, its metabolism. It's not going to slow down its metabolism because it's eating. It is happy. And so it's going to support appetite management, increase your physical and mental energy because the ketones are feeding your brain, giving you really good mental energy, reducing that inflammation. And then you're able to um, clean those damaged cells up, go through that process called autophagy, which I, which I envision as Pac-Man going through the body and cleaning out all the damaged cells and the, and cleaning it out, decreasing inflammation, and what we've put into the accelerated keto that is different than any other supplement are herbal cofactors. And these ingredients increase that ATP production, right? But then we also have put in some supplements that actually cleanse that fatty liver. So even if we don't think we've got fatty liver, we've all got a little fatty liver, it's gonna target that fatty liver target that visceral fat. Now that visceral fat around the belly that so many women struggle with, that's cortisol. That's our stress, right? We're in survival mode. So when we're in survival mode and we don't know if the tiger's going to attack us, we've got to have this layer protecting our organs around our belly. Well, the accelerated keto actually helps target that abdominal fat, that visceral fat that's dangerous. And then we enhance and let's it. talk just touch in to, okay, sorry, I interrupted you on the ingredients. You were going through what, yeah, the ingredients last, to accelerated keto or accelerated fast. One last thing is the scalar frequencies that we add into it. And so the frequencies actually help remove emotional and physical shock from the body, cleanse the liver even more, and then convert the saturated fat in the body into unsaturated fat, which is much easier to burn. And then it also boosts the metabolic rate. So we're talking about slow metabolism. And I actually just did a, a podcast on ways to fix your metabolism because so many women, especially out there, are suffering from a slow metabolism and think it's just part of menopause, which is does not have to be.
Right. No, absolutely. And it's, it's all these all these aspects, right? Many spokes to a wheel. So with um, in, in working with that, in working with like, say, for example, accelerated iodine or accelerated ketone as option, what are some dietary options? So what I focus on is I use the accelerated iodine, accelerated thyroid, accelerated keto as you're in your morning, right? And then your intermittent fast. Can you have your coffee or your tea? Yes, I actually love coffee for those that don't have adrenal um, issues because it does clean, clean the liver. Now for me, I have to be careful. I can't have more than one cup, a cup of coffee because then my adrenals will start yelling at me and and um, us women in our perimenopause and menopausal ages, we have to really take care of our adrenals. Then I fast. And as soon as I'm hungry, oh, mind you, I make sure I am supplementing with accelerated ancient salt, which is a full 62 mineral salt or some sort of electrolyte formula, because you are going to lose your electrolytes and your minerals when you're fasting. You've got to replenish them. When you're eating a high carb diet, your body holds on to water. And when you are not eating a high carb diet, your body lets go. Okay, so then I break my fast with wild animal protein. And I say wild animal protein like bison, which is the most nutrient dense food on the planet. Um, lamb, deer, elk, grass fed beef, but not chicken, not pork, not turkey. And don't scream at me. This is new. And this is because the crowded, uh, the, anal the amyloid proteins that are now in the, the poultry and the conventionally raised uh, animals and the spike protein. So from the pandemic, we can, and I have to be careful with how I say this, the spike protein is in all of us. It doesn't matter who you are. We've all been exposed, right? Okay. So it's in our body and that spike protein is the gift that keeps on giving. And it just keeps wreaking havoc in our body. And it is one um, cause of that unexplained weight gain. And it affects the liver. It affects the ACE2 receptor in the, in the liver. And that can cause insulin dysregulation, hormonal dysregulation, water retention. And um, it will also increase the, um, the, the fatty liver. And people are seeing increases in cholesterol levels and triglycerides without changing anything. So all of that being said, the amyloid proteins, which are misfolded proteins and cannot be broken down by the liver. So here we are eating protein to build our muscles and our hair and our skin. Our body can't break down those amyloid proteins in the chicken and the conventional beef. And so what happens is those amyloid proteins get lodged into our brains for Alzheimer's or dementia, or they disrupt our gut and cause gut pathogens, like say E. coli or salmonella that are normally down in our gut, but they're playing nice with all the good bacteria. They are all playing in the sandbox. Well, the spike protein or the amyloids will actually let the gut pathogens, the bad guys, take over the good guys. So that's another problem. There's just a lot of disruption in the body, and it's also increasing histamine response. And so, so what you, about fish, uh, Sarah? So fi fish is great. Wild, wild salmon, Arctic char, fish is great. Fish is, is something that's interesting, and I didn't really realize this till recently, is high in histamine. And more people are having histamine reactions than before. Now, I have started carrying a histamine Dow supplement that can help with histamine um, di di digestive enzymes if you're eating fish or if you have an issue. And you might not have an issue with fish. I love fish. I eat it once to twice a week, and it is very, very good for you. Um, it's more of the poultry. Chicken's the worst. Pork. Turkey's not quite as bad. Conventional beef is not so great. Um, if you can, you want to focus on that wild animal protein like bison and lamb and, and elk. And those meats are so much more available now in markets. You can order online. I've got a couple companies that I- and I would say definitely try to support your local ranchers too. Yes. Like if you can find that too. 
That, yes. That's amazing. Hunters and yeah, local ranchers and hunters. So a good yep. way to get got, um, wild. I want to, we want as we wrap up, I know there's so many areas we can talk about, Sarah, but one of the things too is, is having a family and, and uh, a couple people in our um, wrap up call for Key to Green 16 live challenge that we did, we're talking about how they were making their recipes for their whole family and working with, you know, what they, was on the Keto Green menu, but then maybe adding some, uh, you know, complete or complex carbs to the uh, rest of the family's meals to keep everyone happy too. And, um, and it's an interesting transition. So with you with, uh, you have three children, how, mm -hmm. like, how, how do they, you know, did you manage their appetites, their eating and all of that good stuff? I love this question. Eventually, I'm going to write a parenting book because um, my kids are my teachers. And, you know, I can I can tell my clients and my customers everything I want. But if my kids don't like what I'm saying, they're going to tell me, right? And they're not going to listen to me. So with each one of my kids, my, my son had issues with cancer, but then he wanted to be an athlete and outperform his competitors. My daughter had anemia issues. She also is a girl, so she wants to make sure she looks physically well, right? Um, but then she also wanted to perform in her sport. My youngest daughter, on the other hand, she has the fastest metabolism ever, and she's trying to gain muscle and perform. Um, so I have t taken whatever their goal is, right? And tweaked my strategy in teaching them how to eat for their goal. Now, hey, if you're gonna eat those Doritos, they're gonna steal that ATP from you and they're gonna make you look puffy and give you zits and make your hair fall out. Is that what you really want? And so being a mom, I'm very busy. I'm a wife. I own a business. I do podcasts almost every day. So I don't have a lot of time for prep. And I actually had a client email me this morning saying, I'm a mom. I don't have the time to do all this prep. If you look in my freezer, I've got frozen meat individually packed. And each, you, each piece is, you know, six to eight ounces of meat. For me, I will pull out two bison ribeyes um, for a day. And I'll have maybe one for lunch and one for dinner, but then I fill in with the vegetables. But the great part of prepping with wild meat in your freezer is that each person, say my husband wants a beef ribeye and I want a bison, or maybe I feel like fish tonight and he wants steak. Um, it's easy to pull out, defrost, and cook in a pan, throw on the barbecue, and I always have a salad or a green vegetable that's available. And for my daughter who wants to bulk up, I have a nice big sweet potato or, or some brown rice or some brown rice pasta that's gluten-free um, to go with it. So leftovers are great, but the, the, the forward thinking. So for instance, I like to make these bison meatballs, which are ground bison, shredded zucchini, a couple seasonings, and I just mash it all up and I put them in balls and throw them in the oven and broil and within 15 minutes they're done. And they're my daughter's favorite leftovers for lunch. So to make sure you're making enough food for the next day and that, it, that makes it really easy as well. Oh, I can't hear you. There we go. <laughs> You're going to have to give us that recipe too, Sarah, because I mean, to make things easy for my daughter, who's now 15, is like sometimes I'm, I'm not home from clinic till 7.30 or 8. And so, um, you know, she's on her own to prepare dinner in the evening. And so she will has to pull out things from the freezer, grab, you know, learn these healthy options that she can do. And sometimes it's not healthy. I think, I don't know where she got them. There were some kind of, um, it was like some uh muffins of some kind uh, you know with seafood mixed into them it was very interesting i'm like where did you get these i have no idea but, um but uh, you know it's interesting so sometimes it, it's that it's you know where they're making their choices they're also figuring out the difference of how they feel and it's important as a mom so i knew you as a mom would have some great tips for us so i want to thank you for being here i mean i definitely think accelerated 
iodine and your accelerated keto or accelerated fast, um, whichever, however you name it, we'll put those links below too, because those are two really good products. And it's important to, you know, again, I wish we lived in a cleaner environment where we didn't have to constantly detox and, and um, filter out the uh, harmful things that are in our body, but this does make a difference. And again, iodine, I think is so critically important for all the hormone receptors in our body. Um, if you are taking iodine, I do recommend you do your um, thyroid antibodies and work on clearing that, those at the same time. So gluten-free, dairy-free, food sensitivities, other autoimmune issues, definitely spike proteins, a consequence. Um, it can affect the thyroid as well. So we look at all those things, but it can still use um, iodine-rich foods. Like I always tell clients, seafood, uh, seaweed, sushi type things, and even just the nori paper, the nori uh, wraps, the nori paper. My daughter loves those for snacks. And so that's a really good snack that you can feel pretty good about. So uh, know where that seaweed has come from though, to the best of your ability, because that's an issue too. All right, tell our audience where they can find you and listen to your podcast too. Everything's at sarahbantahealth.com. You can um, click there to find my free group coaching that I do on Telegram. It's non-censored and everyone is there to support each other. I post daily. I answer your questions. And you can also email me through the website to ask about an, your own personal protocol. You know, if you're stuck with unexplained weight gain or if you have mold toxicity, whatever it is, I'm happy to put together a protocol for you. And my podcast, Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show, is on over 100 different podcast outlets. So wherever you're listening to podcasts, you'll find me. And truly, I'm here to help you because I, I feel, Anna, that we could have the best second half of our lives, much better than the first half, regardless of these um, obstacles, these challenges, the toxins, the insulin resistance that we're all facing and really feel our best. I agree with you, Sarah. Thank you so much for being on, on with us in the Girlfriend Doctor Show. And for all of you that are listening, definitely check out sarahbantahealth.com and check out her podcast too. And she just has a lot of high quality products and information. You can see just from our conversation today, I know she has like a dozen more she can tell you about for sure. So, but definitely the iodine, the accelerated keto, those are two that I'm starting, that I've been recommending and I'm recommending more to my patients. So look at, look at those and see how they can support you too. And also what are, you know, what are your next right steps from listening to this? Are you thinking, okay, I need to really choose that wild game. I need to avoid having chicken at every meal and, you know, look at those aspects too, and really consider that because our chicken, it's, is definitely true. The chicken population has been seriously contaminated and in conventionally raised, raised. You want to make sure you're getting, um, food sources that are unvaccinated and no antibiotics to the best of your ability as much as possible for the healthiest, most natural and conducive for your own body's ability to, to heal itself. So that's a, that's a big takeaway here. The additional takeaway I hope you took is that iodine is important for every hormone in our body to work, not just the thyroid. And when we prescribe someone T3, you know, you talk about uh, uh, T, like T3 and T4 for the thyroid, it's three iodine molecules or four iodine molecules on those, those uh, whether it's a prescription or a um, uh, supplement. So we're looking at that intense amount of iodinization that it's necessary. So part of that is healing yourself, healing yourself. And the third thing I just want to bring up is that why is thyroid disease so much exponentially higher now than it was 50 so years ago. All the hormone disruptors are part of it. The toxins in our chemical, the makeup and skincare products that we're putting on our skin, going into our lymph, going into our thyroid gland, it's, it's significant. I had a 26 year old patient in my office the other day, uh, about, about four weeks ago, and she had like, a notable goiter. I examined her and there were thyroid nodules. She was 26. She'd been to doctors, but you know, her thyroid, her TSH was normal. We did a thyroid ultrasound and there were um, three significant thyroid nodules. We we're watching that at this time, but 
you know, why is our body producing thyroid nodules or uterine fibroids, for instance, or other cysts anywhere in our bodies? Detoxification in our current environment has to be a, a, every, a daily part of every day of our lives. And with that detoxing negative emotions, ne negative emotions bring cortisol and um, hate and animosity and se separation and segregation. So we want to focus on detoxing from those negative emotions and filling our cup with gratitude, love, kindness, and consideration for others. So as always, I love being your girlfriend, doctor. Thank you for being here. Please share and rate this episode. Um, love your five-star comments and appreciate those. Those help me in the rankings. Thank you guys so much for being here. Till next time.